I like getting dressed up. Meaning, putting on all my extra clothes for the weather, getting all bundled up and kind of like warmed up. Because we have a windstorm warning coming in. I just love this time of year when the winds come up and they blow away all the dust within, so to speak. Kind of like that song that Keith Green once sang, Rushing wind blow through this temple, blowing out the dust within. Come and breathe your life upon me, for I've been born again. <laughs> you know, if you are born again, there was a time in this country, in America, when a man could take his son and train him up and teach him in the ways that he had learned. That he could take him and give him a career or a job. And that man would work in that job 5, 10, 15, 20 years and retire. He would get a pension. He would be given a gold watch you know, for retirement. We all had this Norman Rockwell, I think it's Rockwell, picture of America. That you had one job, and you had one wife, and you had two kids, you know, and fathers knows best. And it all worked out. It didn't work out, did it? Somewhere along the way, we began to discover not everything stays the same. As a matter of fact, you should learn from weather that nothing remains the same. Everything is in the process of change. It is always an ongoing development. The sun rises, the sun goes to midday, the sun sets. Now you could say that doesn't change, but in reality, not only does it change from north to south as it seems to the earth tilts back and forth you know as you go through the season summer spring winter fall but likewise the weather changes consistently on a regular basis you could carry an umbrella around for the rest of the year and maybe never need it or maybe need it off and on but you can't count on it being always the same the same thing is true in life is that if you thought at some point in time that one career move, you know, you were going to learn, oh, I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> and then you found out rock star was a drink and it wasn't a person. I can't become a drink. But seriously, let's say you wanted to be a football player and you broke a leg. <gasps> oh, no, your life ended. No, it didn't. Get on with it. Get up. Change your vocation. Change your direction. Change from what you thought you were going to do to what you need to do in order to go forward in life. You see, it's about change. And one of the things that brought about this whole idea of like evolution was, believe it or not, it wasn't a discussion in the Darwin days about whether evolution was a science or whether creation was a science. It was all about uniformity versus catastrophism. If you read the book Worlds in Collision, you'll kind of, by Emmanuel Vilikowski, you'll kind of get a handle on what was going on at the time. Is that there was this whole idea being portrayed in sciences that everything remains the same. You can count on it. It's all uniform. It's always going to be nice, even, steady evolution of going from process to process to process, and it always is going to work the same. Well, it sounded good. If you looked at it on a short-term basis, it looked good. Matter of fact, it was the basis for what Darwin did when he observed, you know, in his natural sciences, you know, these new animals that he found. But the reality is, is that science took a wrong turn. It decided that the world hadn't gone through these catastrophic upheavals, but that it had uniformly changed through certain events. <laughs> Nowadays, we know that you know, change is inevitable. It is going to happen on a regular basis. 
And it's not a slowly evolving thing, but it's a thing that will happen suddenly. You know, Jesus kind of said that about not only his return, but about life in general, that the wind blows whither it will. You neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. Your life, if you're a born-again Christian, should be about change. If you've gotten to the place where you planted your feet deep into the dirt, you know, and you, you got your mortgage payment, you got your house payment, you got your car payment, you got your insurance payment, you got your foundation secured, you know, you got your house, you know, all ready, wrapped up in a nice tight bundle for you to keep making payments for the rest of your life. And you're going to leave it to your children and your wife or your husband. Or however it worked. Something happened along the way, didn't it? Oh my God. You've got divorced. What happened to the house? What happened to the kids? What happened to your faith? You see, life has always been about change. And Jesus knew that. Oh my God. The house I built was on a floodplain. But when I built it, I didn't think it was going to flood. It didn't say it was going to flood. There was no real warning. It was a floodplain. But, you know, every 50, 100 year flood. And suddenly your house was wiped out. Hmm. Oh, my God. The government came in and said, we need this for a freeway. And you were told to move. Does that mean you lost your faith? Oh my God, my company went broke. I had no job, I'm losing my house. I lost my house, I lost my job, I lost my career. Oh my God, exactly. Oh my God, thank you that you are true and we can trust in you because you're the only thing that ever changes. You're always the same. You have told us from the beginning and to the end that there would come times of tribulation. There would come times of change. There would be a process that I would take you from ages to ages life, which is what eternal life is. Eternal life isn't the idea of just one never-ending, non-stop event of sitting in bliss, you know, as the nirvanas say, and you're just kind of like leaning back and, ah, oh, I'm experiencing God, or, yay, I'm experiencing God and I'm working for the rest of my life. No, it's not like that. God created the universe. The universe is in expansion mode. The universe is constantly developing in a way that he planned. It's going outward, not inward. It's constantly in a process of change. So too, in your life as a Christian, you should be in a process of change. You should be growing. You should be learning more and discovering more and becoming more like, not just Jesus, but discovering more about Jesus and about his Father. Because you'll never know everything there is to know about God. But one thing you can know is this. You're not going to be the same. Tomorrow you'll be different than you were today, and you are different today than you were yesterday. You are in the process of change. And you will be removed at some point in time from your comfort zone into God's will for your life. Because it's not about comfort. It's about the peace of God that passes all understanding. And the only way that you know you have the peace of God that passes all understanding is if you are put into an unpeaceful circumstance, a situation, a frustration, an aggravation. Because then you have a choice. Will I react to the circumstances of my life? Or will I act like a Christian? The choice is yours. Because you see, God has already told you, just like the weather, the times they are changing, and things are going to change for you. We live in the latter days. And if I could give you a word, you know, that's true, I'm going to tell you that you are not going to be able to sit, sit back in your pew and do nothing. God isn't going to leave you that way. He is going to rearrange your life in ways he chooses to do. Whether you participate in it or not will make it easier for you 
or harder for you to adapt to what he is doing with you. In daily life, the Lord of peace himself gives you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. Peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Comforter, even the Spirit of Truth, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We have that fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, and peace. My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said unto them, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up from here. For wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in your sight? Is it not that you would go with us? What a beautiful prayer and what a beautiful word that the scripture gives us in the sense of, would you want to go forward in this life without God? Would you want to be someplace that his grace is not covering you? Would you want to find yourself in a place that God is not with you? You see, that's the difference between accepting change in your life and getting stuck in a rut. Because if you're repeating the same mistakes over and over again, it's time to make a change. The word for change in spiritual terms is called repent. Repent means to turn from one direction, which is obviously wrong, to go in 180 degrees the other direction. That is change. Michael Jackson once wrote a song, something about the man in the mirror, and he, he says, I need to make a change, and the change needs to be me. Well, that's kind of what you need to do in your mind. You need to change your mind about some of the misconceptions you may have about life in general. Because life is all about change. And that change can be a process of developing into a better person or a person that, because you're becoming worse than what you were, need I say that you'll probably develop health issues, you'll probably develop relationship issues, you'll probably wind up being somebody that nobody wants to be around. So you're going to develop loneliness issues, despair issues, all those things that aren't peace, joy, love. But if you decide to make a change and to walk with God in what He is doing, then all these things that happen around you, this process of change, the weather, your loss of a job or your loss of a wife or a house or a, a circumstance in your life, you don't look at it as being so bad, but rather you try to see what the good can come out of it that God is doing. Because if you're walking with Him, and if you're talking with Him, if you're reading about how He operates and how He does things in your life by reading the Bible, then you discover that He has a reason, a plan, a purpose for you. But more than that, He has peace he would give you in the middle of what you thought was the end of your world, which might just be the beginning of his world for you. Change your mind, change your direction, and change your attitude by looking to him for instruction in the way you should go. We glory in tribulations. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Jesus' sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Sorrowful, yes, of course, yet always rejoicing in tribulation. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. They departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, and neither shall fruit be in the vines, and the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And as the weather changes, you could stand around stark naked outside of a house and freeze to death. You could wait as though some mystical, magical carpet ride is going to come along and take you and whisk you away into a fantasy world. You could say, oh, woe is me, and sit down and plop down, stark naked outside of your house, freezing to death. Well, you could go in and put some clothes on. I mean, don't be stupid. <laughs> God is a practical reality. He is a person. He revealed himself in Jesus. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. God loves you. God provides not only for your clothes that you wear, but he will provide for your food and your shelter. He's not going to give you everything in a way you want, but he will provide for you the things that you need that he may accomplish in you his purposes to bring about for you his design that you will find yourself perfect joyful, completely peaceful, and most assuredly in love with the God who meets you where you are. Don't get so content in what you think you've got, because what you've got will be taken away.